in Washington, D.C. here not too long ago, there was uh, a debate over one of the universities, George Washington University, I believe, with um, Ward Churchill and academic advocate, conservative advocate David Horowitz on the issue of should politics be taught in the classroom. David Horowitz argued no. Ward Churchill argued yes, that um, it's impossible for people who are professors, he would say, who profess what they know and what their experiences are and from their own scholarship to not profess a viewpoint since that naturally stems from it. But I think it also goes a bit further than that in the idea of what we now have the term social justice. Mm -hmm. That a university isn't just about teaching students to think critically, um, to open them up to the marketplace ideas, but to give them direction from people um, who are considered to be um, you know, their academic superiors, hence in the role of being teachers, mm -hmm. to guide them along the lines of what they should do for the purposes of social justice, whether you mm -hmm. consider it to be diversity in the classroom, changing public policy, whatever it is, or even to the goal of, of changing the fabric of society, as we call it. I, is that acceptable by, by ACTA standards? Can you have the concept of social justice that's, that's been introduced for some time now, but is steadily growing? I think it seems to be the main counterpart to the idea of academic freedom and responsibility we have. I think there's a profound confusion by many in the academy of what academic freedom really means. Obviously, if someone is uh, hired to teach English literature, we expect that person to be teaching Shakespeare, Chaucer, uh, and not Condoleezza Rice. I mean, there are certain limitations to the field that we ask uh, professors to teach. What we found when we uh, undertook our study, How Many Ward Churchills, is as we looked at the catalogs themselves, rather than providing an objective assessment of multiple perspectives, often these classes were nothing more than um, politicized, uh, political advocacy, classes in activism, essentially uh, classes that had already reached a conclusion and were imparting that conclusion which, again, to our mind, is the exact opposite of what a strong, rigorous liberal education should be. That being one which opens students' minds to, vol to multiple perspectives uh, so that the complexity of these issues can be uh, perceived. I, I can think, as, as I look back at some of our examples in How Many Ward Churchills, at Davidson, an anthropology course, where the requirement was to produce a 15 to 20 minute skit on five ways to demonize an ethnic minority. I mean, again, the question should be, I think, in anthropology, are we imparting uh, information and in teaching students uh, the accepted scholarly standards and the perspectives in the field, or are we insisting that they reach some sort of preconceived political conclusion? And that, to my mind, is not education, that's indoctrination. Well, I, I think a lot of people would agree in the area of the conclusions have already been set for us. So to stray from those conclusions, uh, whether it's a student or somebody else, even within the department, um, who strays from that uh, will be summarily met with whatever type of, of punishment there is, failing grade or ostracized or even to the point of not allowed tenure um, is, is one thing. It's the, the other that you bring me in situation is some of these things obviously are for all the purposes we described as perhaps maybe not the, of the highest academic quality, mm -hmm. maybe suspect <coughs> to the rigors of what would pass for, for, for a core scholarship still inviting to, to, a, to a certain amount of students to say, yeah, I want to be an activist. Mm -hmm. It's the time that, whether they're young or at a certain point, that they're going to school, maybe not just to simply um, have a, a passive interest in something, but more of an active interest, saying, I've already decided for myself. It's kind of like you know, when a student is in a, in a trade school. It's, you've already decided where you're going to be. Maybe like an associate college, uh, you, you have some, already have some direction of what you want to do. There could be enough students that decide that this is exciting for me. I know what I'm getting into. It's already in the syllabus. I want to be a part of it. This jibes with what I agree with. Now maybe that it does have overtly political overtones, but if there's enough students that fill up the classes and it justifies itself with attendance, then then what's the harm in that? It again gets back to the mission of the university and the academic responsibility of the professors in that university. Uh, when we uh, have students in these colleges and universities. We expect, uh, as taxpayers and parents, that they will learn about broad areas of knowledge. 
Uh, certainly, I think when we send our children off, we don't assume that they're going to have classes in social activism or those that uh, impart a particular preconceived result. Uh, clearly, students can be active. Clearly, students can have perspectives. But that's not the role of the college classroom. The college classroom is that forum where varying perspectives are brought to bear on uh, important areas so that students can learn to think for themselves. When we send our students to colleges and universities so that they can become later in life informed citizens, uh, effective workers and lifelong learners. And certainly if they hear only one perspective or only one outcome, we've done them a disservice because when they go into the voting booth, will they not be able to look at both sides of issues, multiple perspectives on issues, and reach their own informed decision? Uh, I fear that often they will not be able to because they will not have been given the opportunity to hear varying perspectives and to weigh the pros and cons of those perspectives. When we did our survey of students uh, in the atmosphere in the classroom, it was very interesting. They self-described, a majority of the students surveyed in the top 50 colleges and universities, self-described as liberal or radical. And notwithstanding that description, they complained that in the classroom the professor was introducing politics when it had nothing to do with the class, and that uh, almost a third also feared that their grade was uh, in danger if they did not agree. Uh, when we have that kind of coercion, that sense of intimidation, uh, then I think um, our colleges and universities are really doing our citizens a disservice because rather than doing their job, which is providing an education in the classroom, instead they're providing nothing short of indoctrination. I, th I think one of the things you mentioned here is you know, the inherent skills we try to develop in, in students, such as critical thinking skills, and, and that kind of made a great question. And another concern is the area of being a student versus a revolutionary, that then there are a f enough um, scholars or professors who don't have necessarily a positive view of the United States, whether it's the government, whether it's the cultural, <coughs> or as an entity in itself, and have publicly made their feelings out about it. Ward Churchill himself says he wants the U.S. wiped off the map, and even Canada too. And what, um, what type of responsibility is there of uh, a professor to, should a professor teach with the, with the goal of what the university mission is typic typically for better citizenship? Or does a teacher have the right to say, hey, you know, I think the U.S. is terrible and uh, I believe that it should, you know, things should have revolutionary change and I don't want you to be a better citizen. I don't want you to be part of the program that is to, to go through here and be a better member of society because I don't like what society has to offer you. Does a professor even have that opportunity, um, which, or is that completely counterproductive to the goal of, of a university? If, if, a, if a teacher is going to say, I don't want you to be a better citizen because I don't like what this country is about. Educating for informed citizenship requires imparting information to students so that they are able to make up their own mind. They're able to sift and weigh differing perspectives, differing attitudes, differing um, arguments, and then determine what they feel to be the stronger or the better of those arguments. So it's essentially providing a, a wide range of perspectives on controversial issues so that students can learn from them. And that, I think, is what we ask of our professors, that they impart through their professional knowledge that uh, wide range of views so that students can go out into the world having those critical thinking skills. If, in fact, professors fail to offer those multiple perspectives, fail to have reading lists that show differing perspectives on controversial issues, then again, we shortchange those students because they will not have had the opportunity to learn how to think critically because they've only been told one side of the story.